very warm welcome to another online service from Sudbury Baptist Church. By my count, this is our 13th online service. We do hope you enjoy, particularly if you're a visitor and haven't been to the, uh, the physical church, we do warmly welcome you and thank you for choosing to visit and worship with us. To our Sudbury Baptist family, again, a very, very warm welcome to one and all. Let's start the service in the word and prayer. Please bow your heads. Psalm 37 verses 23 to 24. The Lord makes firm the steps of the ones who delight in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Father God, we thank you for forgiving us, for always being with us for always loving us. We thank you for the sunny days and bring before you those who, despite the sunshine, have dark clouds in their lives. We ask that this service may uplift all those watching and that we all may feel your presence and your comfort will surround us and that we will become beacons of your light in, the, in this world. Heavenly Father, you are the potter, potter we are the clay, mould us. Lord, open our ears, hearts and minds to hear your voice. Father God, we surrender all to you in this moment and allow the Holy Spirit into this service, bringing hope, light and love into our lives. We thank you for loving us, for your grace and mercy, for being our all in all. We call upon you here today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, merciful Father, for your name is great and worthy to be praised. We give you all the praise and all the honour. Amen. We do hope that you are truly blessed by this service and enjoy. Thank you. The notices this morning. For the week ahead, we have the regular prayer meeting at 8.15 on Friday. If you'd like to put forward any prayer requests and are unable to attend on the Zoom platform, please don't hesitate to contact Harriet or Rob, who will be able to give you further information and be able to take your prayer requests into the meeting. So that's every Friday at 8.15, we have the prayer meeting on Zoom. For anybody having a birthday, an anniversary or any other celebration, we'd like to wish you a happy and blessed day from all your family at Sudbury Baptist Church. Whilst we're also looking at the birthdays, we, it was an oversight, but we'd like to wish Harriet a belated happy birthday for last week. The age and number is top secret, but we do know that she did have a birthday last week. She will be doing the reading for us later. And we just hope that she had a blessed birthday. The service today will consist of praise and worship, which will be led by James. The birthday lady, Harriet, will be leading the reading, will be giving us the reading. And the sermon will be led by Graham, who will be looking at Psalm 139. And please don't forget, after the service, if you're listening today, Sunday, at our regular time of 10.30, please join us for a chat and a catch up. Again, we do hope you are blessed by the service. Enjoy. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today's reading comes from Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the, in the depths, 
you are there. If I rise on the wing of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked, away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Here ends the reading. At the feet of Jesus my world changed Everything is brighter I see a picture of what I can be My life will never flee from what I've seen The heart is my desire I want to know you like the child you Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at Psalm 139. I want to ask you a question. Would you like to have a friend who knows 
everything about you. Somebody who knows all about your past, everything you've ever done before. Somebody who knows all your good qualities and perhaps more scarily, someone who knows all your bad qualities. Would you like to have a friend who you couldn't hide anything from? The truth is, very few people can cope with a relationship like that. And we nearly always have parts of ourselves that remain hidden, even from friends, even from loved ones. It's hard being completely open, isn't it? And we can hide things from each other in the church. Sometimes when we come to church, we don't really feel we can be ourselves. The coronavirus has changed society a lot and uh, we are hoping to get back to church soon. Um, and one of the things that we have to do when we come to church, we will have to do, is to wear a mask. But the truth is, we've been wearing masks to church for many years. Often we put on a mask when we come to church and we don't feel free to be ourselves. In Psalm 139, David, the king of Israel, is wrestling with these issues. David is a man who loves God deeply. He longs to live his life for God's glory. And yet he is a man with many faults. He often fails to live up to what he aspires to be. He falls, and when he falls, he falls badly. And this psalm, Psalm 139, is an intensely personal glimpse into the heart of David that can teach us much about ourselves as he bears his own soul. In this psalm, there is such a conflicting and contrasting range of emotions. Uh, at one point, he's caught up in the wonder of worshipping God. But he also expresses some of his most violent emotions. This psalm does not have a nice ending to it. Have you noticed that? That uh, often the psalms start off with something that seems very encouraging and helpful and worshipful. And then there's a bit of cursing at the end. And we can often ignore those bits. But the bit where David goes into a rage is what actually gives this psalm its incredible power. You see, in the psalms, we see human nature at its best, but also at its worst. We see the highs and the lows of human experience. And when we read the psalms uh, with an attitude of openness to the Holy Spirit, they can act as a window into our own souls. And what we learn from the Psalms is that God is looking not for us to go around with a mask on, pretending to be something that we're not, but being honest in our relationship with him. We don't need to pretend. We don't have to uh, think that we need to be a certain kind of, of person to be in a relationship with God. You might say, well, I'm not a very good Christian. I get angry with people uh, and, I, and I shouldn't. Or I get very low and, and surely I should be rejoicing. And, and I look at other people in the church and they always seem calmed and composed and peaceful and so holy. I can never be like that. Have you ever thought like that, thought that you're not good enough really to be a Christian. But what the Psalms teach us is that God accepts people as they are. Jesus said that he would never turn away anyone who comes to him. God takes the angry, the bitter, the immoral and the bad and then he forgives them and then he begins to change them. So let's look at this psalm and see uh, what we can learn from it. So we've heard it read already. And I just want to 
remind us of those first six verses. David says, you've searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. David here is speaking of the fact that God knows him absolutely, completely, through and through. And if you think about it, this is something that is utterly amazing. You see, God not only knows David through and through, but he knows us through and through. And he knows everybody in the whole world, utterly and completely. You know, the estimated world population is about 7.6, 7 7.7 7 billion people. And God knows all about every single person in the world. And he knows what every single person in the world is thinking and is about to say. That is quite extraordinary. God is the ultimate multitasker. So someone said that surely God must be a woman if he can multitask like that. But David thinks about this, that God knows everything about him, that he knows what he's going to say even before he's spoken it, and he finds it wonderful, but also a bit intense. And so he, he continues in verse 7, where can I go? from your spirit where can I flee from your presence if I go up to the heavens you're there if I make my bed in the depths you're there if I rise on the wings of the dawn if I settle on the far side of the sea even there your hand will guide me your right hand will hold me fast if I say surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me even the darkness will not be dark to you the night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you so this knowledge of God is wonderful. But as I said, it's also a bit scary. I was in a, a minister's meeting many years ago and we were studying this psalm. And the person leading it said to us, how does it feel to know that God is watching you every second of every day? And half of the ministers there said it was wonderful, reassuring. And half of them said, it's worrying, it's troubling. <laughs> I won't say which uh, half I was in. Um, but sometimes there are parts of ourselves, as I've said, that, that we want to hide. Have you ever wanted to run away and hide from someone because they know a bit too much about you? You're scared they're going to use it against you. One of the terrible things that we're hearing about in the news quite a lot recently is what's called revenge porn. One of the terrifying aspects of social media where people are in a, a close intimate relationship with someone, that relationship breaks down and then the person who has left them uh, posts pictures, images, videos of them in compromising situations. It's, a, it's an awful thing. But you know, you don't have to fear that God is going to use his intimate knowledge of you in a bad way. He knows you totally. He knows all the good and all the bad. He actually knows the bad bits of you that you can't even admit to yourself. And he still loves you. And you know, the thing is, there's no point in trying to run away from God because you can't. That's what David says, wherever I go, however far I flee, God will find me. Jonah the prophet uh, tried to run away from God and it didn't work, did it? He ended up, first of all, being thrown off a boat and then being swallowed by a big fish. But we don't need to run away from God. Because he loves us. He knows us through and through. And he's on our side. And he never, ever gives up on us. God's knowledge of us is so complete. 
it even goes back to the time before we were born. There's those precious words, aren't there, that we heard earlier. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God formed us in the womb and he mapped out the paths of our lives. All the days that we have have been ordained for us by God. And this idea comes up time and time again in scripture. As most of you know, uh, we've uh, recently had an addition in our household uh, as our little granddaughter has been born. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience. And uh, Kathy and I, we just spend ages just sitting there looking at her. I have to tear myself away to go and do some work, um, like um, produce a sermon or something. Um, but the other morning I was sitting there looking at her and I thought, this is what God is like with us. He loves us. We're precious to him. He's always looking at us. That's what David said, didn't he, in verse 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I'm awake, I'm still with you. You know, God is always thinking about you. And maybe that's a revelation that you need to have. Maybe you know that in your head, but you need to take that down into your heart. And it needs to become real. It needs to become part of you. Many people think that they're useless. That maybe they were an accident. That they came into this world by chance and... They don't have any real value. Maybe negativity was fed into them as children. But what this psalm says is, no, God formed you in the womb. He has a plan for your life. You are not an accident. You are God's special creation. And he's always gazing at you lovingly and thinking about you and thinking about the plans that he has for your life. And, and David says, how... How precious is that, Lord? It is a precious thing to be in a relationship with someone who knows us utterly, who always thinks about us, who knows our good side and our bad side and continues to love us. So now we move on to the final part of this psalm. And, and David, having said all of this, it makes this final part seem all the stranger this is the difficult bit, the bit we often leave off. We would prefer the psalm to end there on that blessed thought in verse 18. But as I said earlier, this is the key to the psalm, the reason David wrote it. So let's remind ourselves of what he said. If only you, God, would slay the wicked away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak evil of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. You know, people sometimes criticise the Bible. They say that it condones violence. And yet the Old Testament says of David, who seems here to be an extremely violent, angry man, that he had a heart after God. He loved God. And this has led people sometimes to say, well, the God of the Old Testament is different to the God of the New. The Old Testament God is a bit vengeful, but the God of the New Testament is the God of Jesus who told us to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. How do we reconcile this Old Testament passage here where David's expressing such hatred with the New Testament emphasis on love and 
forgiveness. Well, I think the key is here. David did love God. And yet he wasn't perfect. He had a lot of anger. He did awful things. He was merciless at times. And yet his heart, in his heart, he longed to be changed, to be different. And we see this at, at the end of this. I'm having uh, had this outburst. I've expressed what's inside of him. He's then said, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So he's saying, Lord, this is what I feel. I feel this hatred. I feel this anger. I'm not going to pretend that uh, I'm different. You know, there is an honesty in this psalm that sometimes is not present in our relationship with God. We we need to be absolutely honest. We need to tell God exactly what we're feeling. All the negativity, all the frustration, all the disappointment. That's what the psalms are about. It's about pouring out your heart. And we learn from this that God is not looking for perfect people. He's actually looking for honest people. People who can say, you know what, I've got my faults, Lord. I've got terrible faults. There's a dark side to me. I am at times a seething cauldron of negative emotions. Sometimes we feel we've got to try and hide this stuff from God. But as we've seen, he sees it all. He knows it. We can't hide it from him anyway. We might as well be honest. But he's not just looking for people who want to express, this is, this is who I am and I can never be different. But he's looking for those who express this and then say, but I, I want to change. Search me, God. Try me. Transform me. And all God is looking for is honesty. For us to tell him, how it is and say God this is me make me different transform me make me like Jesus our faith is so simple isn't it and yet we make it so complicated we just need to start a relationship with the creator of the universe as we are we begin with him as we are we just say lord this is me take my life and make something beautiful of it god sees your heart he knows all about you he loves you and he can transform your life so come to god without fear be open with him and let him begin to change you let's pray shall we Father, we thank you for this psalm. Wow, it's an amazing uh, mixture of emotions. There's the wonderful uh, assurance that David has, that, that God knows all about him. And yet there's also that fear that because God knows all about him, uh, he, it, feel, it, feels, it feels intense, it feels a bit scary. But Lord, we thank you for the fact that David had the kind of relationship with you where he could be absolutely honest. And he could write that down for us so that we know we don't have to come to God pretending to be something that we're not, pretending to be special, pretending to be super saints. Lord God, as David said, search us. Find those bits of us that need to be changed and transform us. Lord, I want to pray that every day we might become a little bit more like Jesus. That people would see something of Jesus in us. For your glory we pray. Amen.
sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence crying holy spirit you are welcome come flood this place and surpasses all understanding remain with you this week now and always may you be blessed with the lord's hope and love in your life we will end this service with the grace which we will say together and in one accord the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. May you have a truly blessed week. God bless. See you next week.